regular schedule of Time Warp Radio to present a specially broadcasted bonus episode. We are discussing our most recent movie minutes with two of our good Judies, Audrey and Emily from Midnight Insanity in Long Beach. Um, So I am Emily. I have been on Midnight Insanity for going on... It was a little over three years. Yeah, going on three years. It would have been three years this year in July. Because we actually actually joined cast the same day, but we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that was one of my questions, because you guys are BFFs. Yes. That is a fact, Mm -hmm. yes. And I wasn't sure if that was something that you guys... We're like, okay, we have this shared thing. We go to Shadowcast together, and now we want to do it, and we're going to do it together. Or if you guys had met when you started performing together. We had never met, and we met the night we both joined. Like, I think the times that we had gone was fully Fully opposite. Yeah. Never seen each other. Yeah. (laughs) That's so sweet. That's serendipitous, for sure. Yeah. I was like, it's a sign. Because I almost joined the (laughs) week before, but I didn't. And I'm so glad I didn't. So I'm Because it just sure. worked out. Yeah. When I joined MI way back in the day, like, I think it was almost 10 years ago now, if not 10 years this October, um, I got, like, poached. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was a regular, and I was coming, like, every single week. And um, I don't know if you guys remember Mandy, but she used to be, like, the main Columbia on Chaos. And then a long time ago, she did MI for years and years. Um, she's the Columbia on the Blu-ray. Okay. Oh, cool. I think it's a little before. That was before yes. us. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, she hasn't been around in a long time, unfortunately. But um, she saw me in line for, like, before Let In and didn't say anything to me. Just kind of, like, I guess spotted me in line and then went back to the cast and was like, there's a girl here. She's going to be a Columbia. Let's vote her in. Yeah. And I had no idea, did not apply to be on cast, had no, like... <laughs> hadn't really had any interactions with anybody on cast. And then the next week, like, everybody came up to me and was like, congrats, welcome to cast. I'm so <laughs> glad that you're on cast now. And I was like, what? What? Oh, my God. Okay. That... <laughs> and so I was just, like, voluntold that I was on cast. <laughs> I had a very – this is Audrey speaking. Yes, um, thank you. No, I, I had – <laughs> Audrey, like, finished that out. We, yeah. we got a little bit of Audrey's voice. <laughs> yeah, I had a very similar experience to that where I went – um, right after my senior prom and <gasps> immediately was like I was in my prom dress my hair was a mess and like we all look I didn't have my shoes on and Wendy you don't need them and Nick came up to me and they were like you're gonna be on cast <laughs> and you're gonna be magenta like Wendy was a Columbia and she was like you're gonna Ooh. be my magenta and I was I like I'm not even 18 <laughs> yet and they were like come back when you are and I did and it was yeah. fantastic that's so funny because i took a lot more convincing actually <laughs> this is emily yeah i was coming a lot i was definitely definitely a regular i was like buying the outfits i cosplayed a lot in high school so i wanted to make the costumes from the movie but i so cool. did not yeah. like intend to shadow cast like i just wanted to make the costumes and like i don't know sure. hang out where I'm for photos and stuff so like mm-hmm. i literally had already been planning out a Columbia costume, but it had never crossed my mind to actually do the damn thing. <laughs> That's so cool, though. So wait, so you did other cosplay, too? Yeah. In high school, I was, like, super into, like, the anime, like, yes. con cosplay scene. And so that's the reason I taught myself to sew, actually. What's your favorite anime? My favorite anime of all time is Sailor Moon. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's such, like... Pick. An easy answer, I feel like. But it's it is true though. It's just too true. <laughs> Jupiter is my girl, so Oh my god, that's you. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you decided you wanted to cosplay Rocky Horror. I decided I wanted to cosplay Columbia specifically because mm. I was like okay. I loved the whole ensemble. I loved yes. the Sparkly, I loved 
the tail I just loved everything it's mm-hmm. just so mm-hmm. extra that you're like I, I need it I can't I don't have an explanation or like a reasoning behind it I just need it I need something that's sparkly in my life like a hundred percent yeah <laughs> I need to justify owning that costume you don't even need to justify it I just need it <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then I actually did it, and I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I I feel you. I had, like, three bustiers all commissioned, like, within a couple <gasps> weeks of each other. Oh my God. And I was, oh like, God. fingers bleeding, just, like, calloused <sighs> over, and I was like, why am I doing Blind. this? Yeah, I handed Blind from I feel that. Yeah. Sequining. Because, uh. Audrey, you make your costumes as well. Mm-hmm. I do, Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys are so talented. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for, no, for real. Like, that's... Uh, I have so much admiration for uh, f- folks who can sew. That's like... I, ju- I just don't... Have that Thank you. Of, yeah, yeah, it's I a lot. It. I'm like, the, what? I, how do you make it do the thing? It's make a, it a wonderful costume. and terrible talent. It is. Yeah, And yeah. then it's like learning to sew for rocky purposes is like because you have to think of like quick changes Mm -hmm. and you have to think of like oh my god i have to work with like the absolute worst fabrics in the world just seriously (laughs) because that's what they did in the movie exactly so it's like a whole other set of skills that Mm -hmm. we both had to learn like going into it you're like do i want snaps or do i want velcro Mm -hmm. because those are my only two options yeah yeah (laughs) lots of zippers yes lots of zippers and then the zipper breaks and then the zipper (laughs) Oh, gosh, then you have to replace the zipper. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know, I have to remake my Columbia shorts because one of the last shows that I did, it totally, like, broke. Like, literally, I was getting ready for let-in, and I bent down to do something, and my zipper just popped. Oh, my God. But, like, an anecdote for mine, though, my Columbia shorts are literally, like, the sisterhood of traveling Columbia shorts. (laughs) Yeah. I have had so many people borrow my shorts and my costume of like all body types and they fit it's incredible (laughs) and they're literally just like trousers i got from savers and cut up but i've had reina i've had walter i've had had my own audrey i've had so many people use them yeah and it works yeah because it's like the best part about it is if like it's too big on the waist or too loose like you just tuck it into Uh the corset and it'll hide yeah it's so (laughs) just the shiny hides everything yeah it's great that's literally my tailcoat, though, because I've had everyone from, like, Mars from Sins. I don't know if you know them, but they're, like, super oh, yes. tiny. We love yeah. them. To, like, San, who is beautiful and voluptuous, and, yes. like, it yeah. fits everyone, and it's I just so that. weird. Mm-hmm. I, that that tailcoat is a miracle. That's Those are both good pieces, though, to be uh, magically... <laughs> Oh, magically yeah, fitting absolutely. because like oh my gosh who wants to make more than one columbia jacket no 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 no, no. no. <laughs> nobody god. here oh my god i hated <laughs> making mine i think i'm still well, fighting sequins yeah seriously <laughs> uh. but you guys were just totally meant to be then because as a magenta like you wanted to audrey wanted to be a magenta and Emily wanted to be yes. in Columbia. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's just like a match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys perform? Well, oh my gosh, you guys perform all the time. Yeah. Oh yep. my gosh. Like, yeah. Okay. Not currently. So midnight. Not currently. <laughs> yeah. I think I went like three months, maybe even four months straight without a weekend off. Yeah. Oh, about oh about two years in, I was like finally like I'm gonna take one week off. Of, yeah. Oh my god. Like a month. I just, just need so one much. Saturday to fall asleep at nine p.m. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Just one. <laughs> and it was so cute because like. For Starbucks, I work at Starbucks, and I would I had adjusted my schedule, so I was like, I don't close all the way on Saturdays, and I don't open on Sundays because of this. Mm. And yes. like at first, I never really explained why. I was just like, oh, it's like church or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. Then, it in is. A way, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then my coworkers were so cute on Sundays because they'd be like, oh, how was your show? Like, how was your thing? And I was like, thank you. It was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Midnight Insanity is a weekly mm-hmm. running show, normally. Yes. And Audrey, you're the cast lead. 
I am. I was elected during quarantine, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we always have elections in July, and it just kind of was like, well, here we go. But I did, <laughs> I did do it a year. little bit before. Like, I subbed in as yeah. the casting mm-hmm. director for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And what does that entail for you? You cast the weekly shows? Yeah, so it's um, casting and then, like, filling in whenever someone calls out, which is always stressful, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of making sure everything runs smoothly and Mm -hmm. watching the show while also performing and giving (laughs) notes and everything. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's a big chaotic mess, but, I mean, I really enjoy i enjoy it and i'm just Mm -hmm. here to help yeah (laughs) and i always think it's funny because i i'm pretty sure that i'm the youngest person on our cast oh (laughs) oh my god maybe yeah like maybe chloe is younger than me but even then only by like a month yeah she's she's a young one well Mm -hmm. you guys are all just such sweet babes (laughs) and like (laughs) oh my gosh it i cannot I cannot express enough the talent that you guys bring to the stage. Oh, thank like, you. <laughs> no. Okay. First of all, if you're not looking at our Instagram, you should be because. Yeah, absolutely. I have to like split hairs when I'm choosing for these <laughs> photographs because. We have so many good <sighs> ones and like almost every other, like Every it's other like one. your face, <laughs> it's perfect. But then also your body, you're doing like a Frank a Frankieism with how you're leaning your foot and like or also you're doing something with John and it's a really cute moment to capture Aww. the like chemistry of the cast like oh yeah oh my gosh there's so many fucking good photos that I have <laughs> it's so cool too because I haven't seen some of them that you guys post yeah some of the ones you post we just skip over and then it's really exciting <laughs> oh my God, we always send seen them to each other yeah. and we're like oh I want you to know that I have, like, not only do I have a ton of them saved on my phone, but I also am an admin on, like, the chaos group. Mm -hmm. So I get to look through every single show photo that anyone has ever posted, ever, in the history of chaos. So I just, like, comb through all of them, and I'm like, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and I just happen to pick, like, a ton of them that you guys are in. Yeah. (laughs) Because we do chaos a lot, too. I love casting at chaos. I do, too. Yeah, because I joined chaos, like, Mm-hmm. Like literally a few months before all this hit, but mm-hmm. before that, both of us <laughs> guessed it regularly. I would yeah, say regularly you, uh, for a while. You both have been saving my butt as uh, <laughs> Columbia and Janet. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So you said that you cosplayed and compiled all of their costumes, and what that led to was you learning and regularly performing as. Um, every character i'm pretty sure i have performed as every single character except krim and Ah. i am a lot more specific i was gonna that's a nicer way to put it yeah yeah Um, (laughs) selective selective (laughs) selective picky um i would say i am first and foremost firmers firmers Columbia. Uh, for definitely more Columbia as my main, um, and then Frank and Brad as secondary uh-huh. characters. I have also done Rocky mm-hmm. before for villains, and then I also have done Magenta on special occasions or mm-hmm. just to fill in when we really needed it. And then you did Riff right before. I did Riff for Daiki, yeah. Yeah, that was so fun. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Oh my gosh. I love Daiki. I miss doing Daiki. That's so fun. Okay, can you tell us about what Daiki horror and homo horror are at Midnight Insanity? Yeah, so um, every year we do um, homo horror in November and then Daiki horror in December. And it's an all- like mask presenting cast mm-hmm. for the homo horror and then all femme presenting for Daiki. And of course we've had to like shift it over the years where it used mm-hmm. to be like mm-hmm. male and female, but obviously mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that's not, that's, that's not, not up to date with the times. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've like kind of transformed it, but it's always so fun. I think like one of my favorites was when like anytime Walter does anything for oh it, cause gosh. it just, 
He did Magenta. Mm. He's done Columbia, and it just does not look right. Oh my god! Yeah, and it's I a love great it. Opportunity for people to try new things. Yeah, which I love because that most. was the first time I ever did Frank was for Dikey. And it was also and our first time ever. Both of us actually, our first time ever performing was for Dikey. And I was Brad. And I was Aww. an emergency sub because I actually lived in San Francisco at the time, and I was back home for Christmas. And they were like, "We need you to do Doctor Scott right now, like in five minutes." What? Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's really cute. I know. Like we that joined the same day, up, performed yeah. the same day. Yeah. And oh. Dikey Horror was actually the first time I ever went to MI. So I have a cute little, like, first time I ever went, first time I performed, and then first time I did Frank Anniversary. I love that. That's so That is so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my first time doing Columbia was Dikey Horror, and before that I had only ever done Transylvania. Yeah, like, it's so great to just literally try whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so nice. And it's, like, the one show a year where you can kind of, like, do your own twist on it if you want to. Like, Mm -hmm. it's a little bit more forgiving. Mm -hmm. And it's always, like, at least homo horror is. Homo horror is a little bit of a mess. It's a mess. And I love it. Sorry to the men. It is a a little bit of a mess. But we love it because we get to be pageant moms in the front row. It's, like, the best part. We literally just sit in the front row and reenact it for them and they'll just watch us and recreate it. Like, full dance mom in the front. It's been a mess since I joined MI, which was, like, ten years ago. So, at least they're keeping up the tradition. Yeah. (laughs) I'll be, like, doing the Columbia floor show, like, in front of them. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Back in my day, which makes me sound like an old I love that. Uh, yeah. Go off. <laughs> we used to not have like enough dudes to fill up an entire cast of like homo horror, so we would mm-hmm. have to pull tech people on stage oh, no. to fill Jeez. roles. So that was even better because it was like I've never even been on stage and you want me to do what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it was, I, oh, it was just always But a train sometimes wreck. that's how you get the good ones. Mm-hmm. That's how you oh, get yeah. Like, yeah. a secret performer who's That's been how we got an watching. incredible Frank one year. Um, yeah. Actually, that wasn't even homo horror. Somebody, one of our Franks was super sick at the, la- like, literally last second. Like, we were, I think it was like 10 o'clock. And they texted and they were like, hey, I've been vomiting nonstop for the last half hour. I can't come. Oh, no. And we were like, you're Frank. You can't do this to us. (gasps) Yeah. And uh, we all went to the trunk of our car and dug up as many costume pieces as we could and tossed on one of our spot techs as Frank for the first time that night. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I feel like those are always the best performances, though, because you just get raw. Yeah, there was one time where I did half, not even half the show as Brad, because our our Brad that night was super running late, like, fell asleep and just didn't wake up and no one could contact them. And, like, Emily wasn't there and Ricky wasn't there, but I had, like, the Brad costume in my car. (laughs) And I was like, well, and I had, like, I had red lipstick on and I had pink hair at the time and I still did it. It's fine. (laughs) It's Brad. Yeah, and then the Brad, like, ran out, like. Don't think about it too hard. During (laughs) the car scene and, like, we switched and it was a funny thing. And then we all, we both went out for bedroom scene, which was awesome. But it was the most hectic night, but probably one of my favorite nights like ever performing so i did a i did a reverse of that once where our columbia wasn't oh, feeling well oh halfway through the show halfway through yes. the show and she was like i need oh. to go i can't anymore yeah. and i was in tech i was in tech oh. clothes and i was like well yeah i guess and then you did that one <laughs> other time where you had to drive back home because our columbia was like oh i'm not gonna be there at 11 yeah remember that uh, have you ever done five minute columbia makeup i have i also yeah. have yeah <laughs> Have you ever done five minute Columbia makeup on someone else, like <gasps> before Pride Parade? Oh, I've done that. Oh. <laughs> I used to live like right by the start of Long Beach Pride, and I wasn't in it yeah. that year, or I had like left cast or something, and they stopped by my apartment, literally pounding on my door at like six <gasps> in the morning, and they were like, I'd be like "Hey, yeah. uh." This person's gonna go out as Columbia. Can you do their makeup? And I was like, No. Yeah. I'm asleep right now. <laughs> I'm literally asleep. Please don't do this to me. 
that's <laughs> but that reminds that's like me my worst the, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like having to take over mid-roll my best friend uh chris wiley was guesting with us as brad like way back in the beginning of chaos and jumped off the stage at one point in the show i think it was after he got medusa and literally broke his foot <gasps> jumping off of our old stage like Ew. in the middle of our show oh broke his God. foot I saw the look on his face, was like, he's actually hurt, ran and got a, ba- a giant trash bag full of ice because that was the only bag we could find, <laughs> oh, no. and um, put up somebody else on stage just for floor show. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. The uh, show must go The show must go yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I think y- you guys know better than a lot of people that, like, uh, folks who come to these midnight showings are uh, such huge fans and are looking for a good time and are also anticipating like people who love performing like you guys like you guys bring it every time oh. <laughs> Sorry, thank you yeah, yeah nice. we try <laughs> there's a reason we keep asking you to come back to chaos just saying <laughs> <laughs> um we just covered Touch a Toucha. Mm-hmm. Okay. We and love Touch a Toucha. Yeah, we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Because you perform as Magenta in Columbia, and yes. then also, yep. Emily, you perform Jan- Janet, you said? I have never done Janet. That's like the one and role she refuses. Probably the one role I don't think I would ever do, honestly. Because I really wanted last year for Daiki for me to be Rocky and for her to be Janet, oh. and it yes. just, she was like, I can't. I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> Why? It's such a, it's it's such a departure. I don't know. Which is why that's You're why I love Brad. it because Janet is you literally really like my polar I love opposite. Brad. I love yeah. being Brad. I love being a big old dork. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. not only that, but like Janet is such an undertaking. Like she's literally on screen for almost every second of the movie. Yes. Yeah. And like even Brad isn't doesn't get that much screen time. It's so true, like yeah. Brad, you get breaks. Janet, you're there for the entire goddamn show (laughs) but brad you have the like impossible quick changes that you have it's true it's very true the brad ones are a lot (laughs) i've definitely complained about them on the show before (laughs) it's all it's all men's clothes too and it's like yeah i think i was our only brad for like two years until we got Corey on chaos so it was like 24 months of me doing Brad, except for when we had guest performers. Oh, oh my god. And it was, it was a lot, man. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a lot. But, okay, Emily, mm-hmm. you are, like, so gorgeously tall. <laughs> yes. Thank you. you. <laughs> it's like, if you embody Brad and Frank on a different level that it, Literally. like, it does the okay yeah well okay yeah (laughs) but also it's like it's one of those things where you're sitting in the audience and you're like whoa i'm getting like a tim curry effect because you're you're so tall that like you do gender bend to a level that like i don't see a ton of female presenting performers go to that level Mm -hmm. like which I love that I am I am six feet tall and like mm-hmm. maybe like a half an inch on top of that, but just six foot. Mm. Um, and I've been tall literally my entire life. Yeah. So from the get go, I never had like yeah. a growth spurt or anything. I was literally just like always a big tall girl. <laughs> well, hey, you found your thing performing on stage. Yeah, that's also it's... why Jupiter's my fave, though. <laughs> oh yes. yes. <laughs> Um, which is so funny, I think, with uh, juxtap- well, juxtaposed with someone, Columbia, which is literally performed by someone named Little Nell. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just find myself so drawn to Columbia's energy that I feel like it almost doesn't matter that I'm not little. I don't oh, know. Absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I, I love being Brad and I love being Frank, but it's so funny when I'm playing someone that's supposed to be this little thing. <laughs> but I think it's more of like little as in like, you look, she looks like you could like break her in half like a toothpick. Oh my god! And not so much like height. <laughs> That's true. Well, you could not break me in half. <laughs> <laughs> and Audrey, you, I would uh, say, fill Frank 
to, oh, you are so gorgeous and frank. Like, yeah. oh, you were so curvy and Stop. voluptuous. And <laughs> you do the, like, hip stuff yes. that Frank yeah. does. It's like, a, it's like such a sexy Frank. It's like full sexy Oh my break. gosh, Audrey. Can I tell For you that real? going yeah. through our photos, you two are the easiest people to point out, even if I can't see faces. That is very true. That's true, yeah. Yeah. And, and that makes my life so much easier. Because <laughs> we go through and we're like, yes. Audrey. Yes. Emily. Emily. Yeah. <laughs> but who's Great. that? Yeah. It's Audrey. Um, Okay, wait, that might be this person. Nope, or it's not. Audrey. <laughs> I, or check the ass. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's literally what Haley told me at one point was, look at the butt, that's how you can tell. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's just, it's so incredible because I love that the characters are so, uh, they can be performed by any person mm-hmm. and uh, you can be one body type or another and perform as Frank or Columbia or Rocky or Brad or any of them. Absolutely. I love it. How big is your wardrobe? I just want to know. I just, (laughs) I want to picture it. Oh my God. I'm looking at it right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's huge. (laughs) Oh my God. Far too big. So is mine. It's really bad. Yeah. (laughs) Like, especially since I also do Trixie, I literally have. Yeah. Probably just almost half of my stuff is like works for Trixie. Like I all of my that. under the bed storage, like a whole section of my closet. Like, hell yes. I had to literally buy one of those like, um, uh, like movable closets from like Amazon. <laughs> yep. Because it's all of my Rocky stuff. And if I didn't have it, it would take up like my entire half of the closet. Yeah. yeah. My, my Rocky stuff's in the garage on a rack too. Yeah. <laughs> I have it all like in a back room. Like they're all organized in suitcases. Mm-hmm. Like each mm-hmm. nice character. Yes. They Before this, they just lived in my car because <laughs> no matter what, every week it'd be like, okay, I'm playing Magenta this week. And then it'd be like, Janet forgot her whole costume. <laughs> or <laughs> or we don't have the a gauntlet a ga- like yeah. and so i just kept it got to the point where i just kept all of the suitcases in my car cuz there was always something <laughs> she's destined i will tell to be. you this you were the yeah. traveling rocky horror company yeah, yeah. fully yeah <laughs> i will tell you i will completely back up that claim because as a cast lead i come to the show even if i'm not performing with like a tote bag that has Like, floor show gauntlets, Mm -hmm. um, a floor show garter, a a boa, a Janet hat, and, like, the pink rubber gloves for um, Frank. Like, every single show, I just bring those because I'm like, someone will forget. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) And, like, we're both guilty of it, too, is the thing. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. (laughs) No matter, like, even if I have all the suitcases, I could still be missing something. Yeah. Yes. I'll be like, where's I'm my blue socks? Where's my other to, shoe? Yeah. <laughs> to text oh, at the no, last minute, shoe. do you have an extra pair of fishnets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and luckily with us, one of us always has something. Yeah. <laughs> so you perform, it's, Emily does not perform as Janet, but you both perform regularly as Columbia Magenta. And for Tatcha, mm-hmm. I've always just, you know, put my Janet blinders on and been like, oh yeah, it's Susan Sarandon's song. But like, no, it's, it's a third not. of Janet's song and uh, also heavily featuring Nell and Pat, <laughs> yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. What is performing that like for each of the characters? Like what is, I have so many questions because mm-hmm. I have questions regarding like Colombian magenta's relationship ultimately i guess I oh yeah it. yeah i mean like specifically when it's us up there as magenta and columbia i'd say it's the most fun <laughs> 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 because we've made out on stage mm-hmm. too many times to count yeah. at this point <laughs> but it's it's really depends as far as the relationship for the columbia and magenta during that song mm-hmm. it is a hundred percent how comfortable you are with that other performer yes Mm because even if you wanted to be screen accurate you're up on top of each other yeah yeah Yeah. so Mm -hmm. whatever you're doing you're gonna be up in each other's faces 
Yeah. So definitely. if it's a newer magenta or if I'm guesting somewhere and I always before show or always at least before ask. Tatcha mm -hmm. is what are you comfortable with? What are your and boundaries like for this and stuff like during, that? During during Tatcha, I'll be like, hey, is it okay if I get on top of you? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Totally got to ask, even if it's somebody that you regularly perform with, maybe they're not feeling it that night. Like, yeah. Hey, is it cool if I climb on top of you? Yeah. That easy. Always got to check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's so fun. I do. I love, like, I love being with Audrey, but I love, I love all magentas. Oh my I gosh, love being yeah. with all magentas, <laughs> too. Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love doing it with Rachel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mars. I feel like I have really good chemistry with mm -hmm. both of them. My favorite is for Daiki. Uh, one of our newer cast members, Stephanie, was doing <gasps> Magenta for the first time. Oh, that was so fun. And after we got done, she was like, oh, my God, I felt so sexy. That was so fun. And I was like, yes! Yeah. <laughs> she guested with us our very last show before quarantine started. And I posted the picture that you were, like, of this scene of her with San. San, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. I just posted that on the blog earlier today. So, oh, my gosh, she's I love gorgeous. her. She's so gorgeous. So much. Ah, yeah, and she's, she's amazing. Beautiful. And she was yeah. like, do you like, like, do you think this will be okay? And I was like, you look amazing. Let's yeah. do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, she had sent me a message like, oh, I just started performing as Magenta, and I would love to guest perform with you, blah, 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 whenever. And I was like, awesome. Get on stage. You're up, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's amazing. And she so that's a, definitely incredible. with like a newer person who's so excited. Like, oh my God, yes. it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, it's great. And like, are you, when you're, sitting there mm -hmm. as Columbia are you thinking like what is what do you think Columbia's relationship to Magenta in the movie is for that for me when I'm there it's fully from a standpoint of like just gals messing around mm. I think that they are friends I think that Columbia is still fully in a committed loving thing with Eddie Mm -hmm. and that that is where her mind is at but that she is just making fun of this stupid gal that came to the castle and look at all this yes. is happening <laughs> and we're just messing around and having a great fun night and then on top of that i think you know columbia might be messing around but i think magenta's definitely into it <laughs> okay i agree it's that yeah, awkward like magenta. you know sleepover when you're younger and like you're just yes. realizing your sexuality yeah <laughs> yeah and i just don't yeah. think columbia like takes it that serious i think columbia yeah, is totally. just whatever yeah it's just flinging it's so around. funny that you guys say that because in our episode we had compared it to uh look at me i'm sandra d yeah Greece. yes like totally that scene where it's like they're making fun of the girl she's like in the next room they're totally making fun of her and i i a hundred percent agree with you. I think Magenta is way more into it than Columbia yes. is. Well, She's like I'm looking curious. right at her the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah. I'm wondering if like Transylvanians, if like the women on the planet of transsexual, if they're all lesbians. Mm. I'm like if I'm here getting for that. Because <laughs> like we're totally conspiracy theorying that there's there's some reason that the Transylvanians are not able to reproduce, and that okay. might be why Frank is... Okay. And then I have another <laughs> okay. question for you. If you guys think that Janet ends up pregnant at the end of the movie. Mm. I had not thought of it. Because it all thought, kind of be relates little, like... to each other, you know? But pregnant by who? A moment. Exactly. Yeah. Pregnant exactly. by. Exactly. Um, so we went back and we actually found like a transcription of her statement from the Denton Affair online. Mm -hmm. There's. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. Sh Sean well, Hall Designs. Sean Hall Designs, yeah. Uh, he posted transcriptions of their statements. So we went back and read it, and there's like a pretty clear uh, like insinuation at the end of hers that she's pregnant at the end. So. We're going on that assumption that if according and to her statement... And that's why Frank says, when when we made it, did you hear a bell ring? You know, oh. it's like, did, did he purposefully implant a seed? Because, like, that's why they, they prayed on them at the church at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why did they choose Brad and Janet for this experiment? And why is, like... Brad's exploring his sexuality, just like a happy, 
B plot to what <laughs> actually is Frank seducing and betting Janet. And then it becomes like just a fun thing after that. Nothing matters after Janet gets bedded. Yeah. That's true. That's so I don't like yeah. the term I bedded. Love that. I know, bedded. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I know. It does always kind of go a little crazy after that. <laughs> uh huh. Huh. Because yeah, they're like, I well, mean, it's like... done. Now we can just have a fucking floor show <laughs> yeah. and eat some people. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's something that we've been like going back and forth about since. I think episode two, when we read the statements. Because it's like, how how much credibility do you assign to something that you can't, as a viewer, when you're watching the movie, automatically pick up on? Like, this yeah. is deep theory. This is stupid deep theory. I love <laughs> this it. This is so stupid deep. But, like, if, also, if Brian Thompson is, like, putting these kinds of Easter eggs in the movie, it's because... He thought there was a, I don't know. A follow-up coming. A bottom layer foundation that they could make a prequel to, even. They could make a sequel that's set 50 years after that. Like, he's just laying little things that don't get tied up by the end of the hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That... Well, tell me what you think. I want to hear. Oh my god! (laughs) I wish you could have seen my face that whole time. Yeah, describing that because you just blew my mind. The the face journey. Yeah. Yeah. We we will send you the screenshots of the transcriptions. Yeah. So you can read through them and form your own conspiracy theories. (laughs) Yeah, but no, I love. um, I love that because, like, when I first saw the movie, when I was, you know, a child. I definitely uh-huh. thought, like, oh, like, before I knew of shock treatment, I was like, what if there was a sequel where they, like, went insane mm-hmm. and then, like, went to space? So I love, like, the idea of it, like, building on top of itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, yeah. being a huge Mamma Mia stan, I love the idea of, like, a, who's father. the father? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, I don't think this is the first time Mamma Mia has come up on no, our show. I don't think so. <laughs> That's how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Look out for our Mamma Mia podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the idea of something that feels random but actually has um, purposeful oh, intent. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree. Because when again, when I was younger, watching it, I literally I remember vividly thinking did I fall asleep and wake <laughs> uh-huh. up because why is all this happening all at once yeah uh-huh. and so the idea of diving in and there being reason behind nonsense is like so cool and I mean that's kind of why we're doing this show because yes everybody's seen it yes yeah. everybody yeah. knows all the fun facts like um, it steps on the toe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yes. You know, exactly. th- everybody knows those fun yeah. well, facts. Anyone but... can watch the commentary on the DVD and watch the like midnight experience. Mm-hmm. And yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, like get everything that you could get out of the surface layer. Yeah, of it. surface level. But and we decided that we wanted to like go really deep under and well, it's like just ridiculous yeah. it's absurd let's, let's find why are we still why are we still performing it 45 years mm-hmm. later if if it is all random yeah you know if yeah. it's like yeah. it's meaningless it's lost to time and space you know the monologue <laughs> at the end of the movie <laughs> but we were like we've got to find like the through line at the very bottom of this gigantic pile so what do you so do you think then that if Janet had stumbled upon Magenta in Columbia instead in their room. Instead of Rocky. Yeah, instead of Rocky, do you think they could have touch a touch at her? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that would be a lot more fun, personally. <laughs> Same. I yeah. absolutely think I'm that. I'm so here for that, yeah. And then it would be a real Sandra D moment. Oh, and yeah. yeah. Like, all the girls just making out you know yeah and then they would <laughs> yep. have found somebody else to make fun of on their little they could have still made fun of rocky just rocky absolutely <laughs> just like look at this <laughs> idiot yeah 
<laughs> or could you just just moaning could you imagine tank. or if it was that i know it's out of t- out of line but like the timeline but if it had been them watching brad and and frank hook up <laughs> oh. oh yeah but i mean it could have been like if yeah. janet had not spent that whole time like complaining yes. and moaning and crying and looking yeah for, yeah fake looking for brad my theory is she was just putting on a show she wasn't really looking for him yeah if she hadn't spent all that time doing all that and had just gone straight to Columbia and Magenta's room after Frank left, then, like, she totally could have watched it with them. And they could have watched it together and judged. And then exactly. had a better time, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he never did that to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. I think I would have rather oh seen gosh. that. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's like, it could, we're at the point where, like, I... I think Rocky Horror is going to be like, you know, like fucking like Star Wars. Yes. You know, where people are going to start writing. I mean, already people write fan fiction. Oh, yes. But like, we're going to. Okay. Okay. okay, Rocky Horror Extended Universe. You said, you said Mamma Mia. You said Mamma Mia. (laughs) Yes. And Cher was just announced to be like attached to something Rocky Horror related, like a new movie, like. Have you heard of have you, I have, have not. It? <laughs> what? what? Okay, okay, okay. This is on my Instagram, and I may be, comp- this may be, a comp- no, I saw it, but like two or three people posted this. Okay, but could you imagine if, so you know how for Mamma Mia, she did her uh, Cher ABBA album, if she did a yes. Cher Rocky <gasps> album of her covering oh, it? So I'm in. Oh, I'm in. boy. So well, sweet transvestite. <laughs> I want you to know that I showed Haley so the good. Cher ABBA album, and yes. then we went on a Cher uh, rabbit hole on YouTube for, like, four hours God, after I that. God, I love Cher. Oh, me too. But could you imagine, like, Cher doing... Okay, if... What would what, you think what, what, what would she be, would be? What would be her role in it? Or, like, would it be a prequel? Would it be... Ooh. Like, she's the grandmother, just like <gasps> Mamma Mia. Yeah, it's actually yes. the same she's performance. Frank's it's just Frank's mom. Yeah. She's Frank's mom. She could be Frank's mom. Revenge of the no Old one Queen. Else Cher is be. Frank's mom. Yeah. Yes. Just Kill hair me. so big, biggest hair. Oh, oh yeah. <gasps> oh, I'm so here for that. Yes. Murder me in my sleep right now. That's what I need in my life. Oh my god! Can you imagine the costuming <gasps> though? Oh. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> just the girl like, yeah. shared tweeting in all caps about rocky horror yeah <laughs> yes i need it she just goes sweet transvestite <laughs> that's you it. do a great that's impression all. that's it's so good funny. yeah i watched moonstruck a lot as a child <laughs> did you uh would you ever shadow cast moonstruck Yes, a hundred percent. Only if Audrey is my Nick Cage. <gasps> I was going to say that's my Nick Cage. Right? <laughs> Wait, what about um, out of it? <laughs> what about Witches of Eastwick? That's another yes. one. Yes. <laughs> do you can can I can I give you a guilty pleasure that Audrey and I like to do? Oh, it's so fun! Absolutely. We like to. Sh- we would. All, we our dream is to shadow cast the Rock of Ages movie. Yes. <gasps> the Tom Cruise oh, one. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> With, and we have it like mostly cast. Yeah, it. it's fantastic. Audrey, Stacy Jacks, really as is. Tom Cruise. As Tom yeah. Cruise. Just because why not? Oh, why not? I think it makes yeah. sense. Literally, anytime we watch a movie, we'll just be like, "All right, let's cast it." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do Green so, so fucking fun. bad. I want to do The Shining. <gasps> just. <laughs> 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 Audrey would kill that. She would kill it. Yes, literally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Be be well, who would you be? I mean, I Jack or Yeah, you have to be yeah. Jack. I, yeah. I would have to be like Shelly Duvall. I don't know if I could handle <laughs> it. I don't know if you could. I, I could see I Haley don't think doing I could, it. I could see Haley doing a great Shelly Duvall. Yeah. I, I dressed up as her for Halloween <gasps> once. Last oh, year. So yeah. great. Yeah. I would oh, she is just oh god. I just oh, yeah. I, I'll be a, a twin with uh, me. <laughs> yes. Just cast me as one of the twins with like someone like so dishyperportionate just for the yeah. gag, just for the sight gag. Yes. Well, that what other cool. movies would you want to shadow cast? Beetlejuice. That'd be so oh, fun. That's yes. my dream. That would be good. Um, I want to do Crybaby because I've only <gasps> seen, I've seen Sins do it once. I I'm pretty sure that's why Audrey got have bangs. had, it is why I started cutting my bangs short. 
I have had Tracy all of Lords. Wanda's lines memorized. Like, like I could yeah. shadow cast the movie when I was like 16. It's a one woman show. I would just do it on my own because none of my friends would watch it with me. So I would just watch it alone and then perform it for myself. Uh-huh. Dibs on uh-huh. hatchet face. Oh my God. Yes. Let's do it. I'm so And then Haley would be Allison. What would I be? I don't, I don't know if I could pretty? place myself. I don't know. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, oh my god. You oh, could be uh, the, the mom. What's his name? The, the dad of the twins. <gasps> Fuck. What's his name? <laughs> Shit. But yes. <laughs> okay. I'm down. <laughs> I was trying to think and I was like, where would I put you? Where would I put you? And then Give I was me like. all the dad. Yeah. Or. Or. Olga. Uh, Iggy the, Pop. Because Iggy <gasps> Pop is literally one of my favorite fucking characters in that movie. Same. Same. Yes. <laughs> Honored. Oh. <laughs> God, Iggy Pop is so fucking good in that movie. Yes, Jesus Christ. that is why I watched it the first time. I'm not gonna lie. I <laughs> have a very inappropriate crush on in- Iggy yes. Pop yes. since a okay, young so age. Too. I would either want Hatchet Face or um the fucking girl that's obsessed with Crybaby. <gasps> yes. I can't remember her oh name. Oh my god, I can't either, but she's the worst. But yes, I could totally I, see that. I, I, she's, I know she's, I love she's the worst, so but like much. in the best way. Yeah. <laughs> Cry baby. <laughs> <laughs> At the show when they're like when he's playing on stage and she has like the fucking horrible tan lines. Oh my oh, god. Yes. That'll be so fun to do a makeup for. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> do you guys do uh shadow cast for uh shock treatment or like Hedwig? Do you? Uh, I guys... have been in a Hedwig shadow cast with Sims before, oh, yes. um, and I just played like all the like I played like four different extra characters. She played a twink. I know I played a twink, and it was really funny because I am <laughs> not. <laughs> and everyone, I remember I heard someone go in the audience. They were like, "I see why he left," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Um, we've never done." I've only I'm, ever done Rocky. Yeah, you've only ever done Rocky. Um, I've always wanted to do shock treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like, even since... Because I think I watched shock treatment for the first time when I was, like, 13. Mm-hmm. And I was just obsessed with the costumes. And I'd talk to my friends about it. And they'd be like, what the hell is that? Okay, well, okay. When was the first time you ever watched Rocky Horror? I think I was 12. Okay. I couldn't have been far off, probably 13. Yeah. It was my, it was actually my mom that showed it to me. Because my mom's like a uh-huh. cool mom. <laughs> yeah. She is a cool mom. My mom is a we very love, cool mom. Love we love her. Becky. <laughs> Becky's the queen. Shout out to Becky. But, um, <laughs> you know what it, you know what was it? It was, no, it was just like. Was it Perks of Being a Wallflower? It wasn't Perks of Being because a Wallflower. Because that came out the same you year. Are? I know. That's, I know that that makes me sound like a baby, but it literally came out the year that I. It came out when I was in like seventh grade. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! My wait, friend do you know Jordan what it was? is the riff raff in Perks of Being a Wallflower. <gasps> That's so cool! That's Shout out awesome. to Jordan. Yes, <laughs> Jordan Bailey. And then I remembered because I had always remembered like seeing it with my mom's collection of movies, and I remember I just like it was in the area of movies I wasn't allowed to watch yet, and I just <laughs> snuck it and then watched it late one night. And then I watched it every single day for almost a month. Mm-hmm. Oh my! <laughs> like it just had such. I showed it to every single one of my friends. Yeah. I watched it. I just because it was around Halloween time. My mom was like, "Oh, this is something that you do." It turns out my uncles had actually gone to the stage version when they oh. were younger and um, had grown up with it. So my mom also just knew of it. And then I think a few years later, the Glee episode came out, and I was like obsessed mm-hmm. with Glee, and I was like, "This is the best thing that's ever happened." I thought it, <laughs> a few years after. I was so excited. That came out. Don't no, say I it. Like... Stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> you're hurting me. <laughs> I remember uh, watching that Glee days. episode and being like, "I have no clue what this is." I love Glee. I loved Glee, and I will own that. <laughs> but I remember I went to a very small Lutheran combined middle and junior high and I was like have you guys heard of this thing and no one had (laughs) and I had my one of my best friends at school had like big curly hair and I was like oh my god you could be magenta and I could be Columbus she was like what is that that's weird (laughs) well I literally I like asked my mom for Christmas I was like I want a Rocky Horror red lipstick oh my god and she like took me to the makeup counter and we picked one out and I would oh, wake up so every cute. single day and like tease my hair because before I started dyeing it, I had very nice curly hair and I would tease it up like magentas every single day before school. 
Oh my god. And just yeah. smeared black liner and then red lipstick. I had the album on my iPod Nano yes. after I watched the movie and would unironically listen to it oh, all yeah. the time. Constantly. <laughs> and now you would never ever yeah. do that. Yeah. I would never oh. do that now. It'll it come comes on. up on shuffle and I'm yeah. like, skip. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> just the first beat of the song and you know it's like, eh. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I remember when we were going, I think I, we were teaching someone on, or going through, like, maybe going through Newark, Columbia's, and they were like, oh, I don't have the the words to the songs, like, memorized yet. And I was like, how? Who are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for it's real. Ingrained it's ingrained in my, like, soul. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's so catchy. It that, is. Like, if you watch it a couple of times, you are singing along to Time Warp and Damage Janet, you know? But, like, every fucking wedding I've gone to, they've played the time warp. And, like, that's fine. It lasts I for, like, two minutes. I think it is actually that long, though. I think it, like, is long. And watching the movie, you get so much intercut with Krim that yeah, you don't spend a lot of time thinking about the dance, the actual song. <laughs> you know? And you also are getting exposition from Riff and Magenta, too. So you're like, oh, there's, like, a lot going on. So when you're just listening to it in real life in retail hell you're like yeah well because even like even at like weddings and stuff it goes by really fast and you're mm-hmm. like okay here it is i hate this but it's over okay cool it's over the taps in there in the studio yeah okay i have questions for you regarding columbia i'd love it yeah she <laughs> is <laughs> a lady. Do you think that eddie is her boyfriend or do you think they're just fooling around and she knows him and she's at the castle. What's that relationship like? I think that they I think that Columbia gets attached to everyone and all her relationships just too fast, too quickly, to head over heels. With Frank, with Eddie, even with Magenta, if it was a longer fling, like anybody that she likes, I feel like it would just be like, boom, this is now everything. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like if that was Frank in the past, sure. Now her current thing's Eddie. It's all about Eddie. And so if she's, I just love her energy in Hoppatootie of just this like pure joy and infatuation and like total groupiness that is in that song. And I love Mm -hmm. playing it. I totally agree. Do you think, so in Columbia's room, or possibly the girl's room, Mm -hmm. uh, there's, like, that giant wall that's all Eddie? Yes. (laughs) Do you think that that is a room that Columbia decorated, or do you think it's a room that Frank decorated that Columbia moved into? I like that it's a room that Frank probably did, and then Columbia moved into. Because I couldn't see, I could see her, like, I could see, but I feel like Columbia's very flavor of the month. Yes. I Mm -hmm. don't think Mm -hmm. that she would take the time to do a room. Yeah. She would appreciate the room. She'd use it as her thing. She'd live in it. She'd love it in that moment. But I don't think she'd be the one to make a shrine like that herself. I agree. Personally, yeah. We have this theory that Frank, the reason Eddie is in the castle is because Frank loves his music and has, like, kind of transported his music back to transsexual. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's why all the Transylvanians know Hot Patootie and are singing along because... Eddie is like a, a celebrity. On, he's a surprise. Well, transsexual. he's an unexpected surprise guest of the evening, mm. and like Columbia definitely knows him. And then the Transylvanians pick up the chorus really, really fast. So it's just like it's pretty catchy. Oh, just, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we don't know if it's like if he's like a star, like a, or if it's that he. Something with Dr. Scott. If mm. Dr. Scott used him as an appetizer <laughs> and, like, he sent him over to kind of gate what <laughs> the aliens were like, and like if he ends yeah. up going missing, it gives him an excuse to go start asking questions and poking around. Mm-hmm. Or he could also just be their drug dealer. Yeah. True. I like that, too, <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Audrey? Oh my god. <laughs> um, I mean, I'd like to think that Eddie is a star because, I mean, I love, Hoppatootie is definitely my favorite song 
in the whole okay. movie, and it's like the only song that I will unironically listen to. Sure. Um, so I could totally see him being famous and then being brought in by Frank. I like that idea for all the Transylvanians. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I'd react the same as Columbia if it was oh. like Harry Styles busting through my party. Yeah. So. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So then where where does Columbia lie in that love triangle? If she's just a groupie, did she go with Eddie to the castle one day? Was she at the castle already when Eddie showed up? Well, she got a guy in a pickup truck give her a wink, right? Yeah. 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 Did so. the guy in the pickup truck, was the guy in the pickup truck Eddie or was he Frank? Oh, yeah. That's I, true. I... Mm, interesting. I would probably myself, I like to think of Frank as like just this infatuation that drew her in. So yeah. I have myself have always thought that it was Frank with the pickup truck reference. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then that while she was there, things maybe didn't go as she planned. This shit's crazy. Okay, follow up question. Yeah. Could you actually picture Frank driving a pickup truck? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> in that, in the look, well, like, at the beginning of the movie when he's more... He's a know, master of disguise. Yeah, I'm right? like... Right, he's in the church. Yeah, I'm like, I could see that I could see that guy driving a pickup truck. If you, if you were, if you took away the church, you'd be like, could you see this guy in a church? You'd be like, no. <laughs> I mean... I mean, took it, took it away without, you could see this guy in a pickup truck? Well, maybe. Maybe, yeah. On the days of Dukes. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> off the preacher outfit and it's just Daisy. It's just Daisy Dukes <laughs> underneath. Nothing else. And then he takes yeah. off the Daisy Dukes and it's the corset and the, and the uh, fishnets. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. That's like me. Just all the different yes, layers of my style. Yeah. <laughs> That's the new Trixie. Aw, oh, shoot. <laughs> no, that should be the new Sweet Tea reveal. He <gasps> unveils and it's to Daisy Dukes and everyone's and it's like, it's to Daisy huh? Dukes. Like, Wait a second. Oh, He's a never that. nude. <laughs> There are dozens of us. <laughs> there are dozens. <laughs> There's now a new scene of Frank crying in a shower. Yes. <laughs> instead of instead of the pool, it's him crying in a shower. <laughs> oh, that means he's like, oh, I'm God. going home and he's crying. <laughs> Just crying. That got me at a good one. That that really t- that tickled me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So then, okay. So when did you watch Shock Treatment? Then you said you watched it like you pretty watched young it too, recently. right? I'm gonna I'm gonna come clean. I've never seen it. <gasps> yeah. What? I thought I might, you me. didn't you didn't go with me that one time when Sins did it? No. <gasps> I think I don't oh know what I was gosh. doing, but I I I thought I I must have been doing something else. I don't remember. Yeah. Don't let Haley make you feel bad. I literally forced her to watch it like a month ago. Oh, I know. It's like I bad Rocky. Well, definitely just don't feel bad in it. general. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I watched it for the first, because I saw Rocky when I was 12, and I'm pretty sure I watched Shock Treatment when I was like 13, uh-huh. because mm-hmm. I had just gone down like the, the rabbit, rabbit hole, hole fully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was like so into it, and I knew like all the songs and stuff, like- and the internet was more uh, usable than it was when we were children. Mm. Yes. It was. Oh I know. Um, and then I remember, like, going into high school and, like, I did theater in high school and everyone would be like, oh, my God, do you know, do you even know what Rocky Horror is? And I'd be like, yeah, do you even know what shock treatment is? And they'd be like, what's that? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm cooler than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Well, did you love it immediately? Or did you, did you have to grow on it? It I did not like the first like twenty minutes of it, mm. and then but now I appreciate all of it. But at the time I was like, this sucks at the beginning, <laughs> and then it got to like, you know, the scenes where you got like sexy Janet, and you were like, I was like, okay, I can vibe with this now. See, because, yeah. like, my, one of my favorite songs, I won't say my favorite song, but one of my favorite songs is Bitchin' in the Kitchen. Oh, yes. And it's, like, right up there in the beginning. And so, yeah. like, from I did Bitchin' love in that the Kitchen, song. I was hooked. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't, I've heard the music. The 20 minutes at the beginning are the the parts that make the most sense. Yes. That's yeah. Like, Is that why you don't like it? I don't, because I was just <laughs> young and I was just like, I like the music, I like the costumes. Mm-hmm. It's horny. Yeah. Just, Once Farley oh, yeah. Flavors shows up in person, it just <laughs> stops making sense. Absolutely. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, it's... that movie is... Emily, just... You don't have to. You don't have to. If you don't want to. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to eventually, I think. <laughs> I'm surprised you've made DVD, it this far. just in case. You yeah. Can, you know, have access to it. Well, why have you not watched it? Have, have you avoided it? I haven't purposefully avoided it. I've known of its existence... Um, but I guess maybe I just didn't have, uh, is it streaming anywhere? You have to like, no, uh, I have it's to on buy YouTube. It buy it. It's on, well, at least when I watched it, it was on YouTube in like 12 minute segments. <gasps> oh, Jesus. Uh, and I was it, yeah, dedicated. It might be, actually. But I do um, have a DVD, I have, do have a copy of the DVD in case you want to borrow it. Do you have a, I, I don't. Okay. I might have to take you up on that. I, I'm not <laughs> against watching it. It literally is just not. I the guess, music's great. It's I've listened really to the music good. before, yeah. actually, yeah. And I've enjoyed it. I've just never watched it. And it's not been like, I will never watch Shock Treatment. Rocky Horror is good on its own. Yeah. No, I just, mm-hmm. I just hasn't come up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I completely am there with you. I just, I was so, I just didn't think of it as a sequel forever. Yeah. You know, like I always thought of it as a whole separate thing because I knew it wasn't Susan and Barry and Tim. I think that's probably subconsciously same with me where I was like, well, I know it's related. That's why I was like, oh, this looks like a hot mess. I got to see it. Like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. And it is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I can't judge. I've seen cats twice. Yeah. (laughs) I'm curious what your opinion, Audrey, is of Janet in shock treatment and how, like, do you think it's the same Janet? Do you think it's... See, like, I think that's, like, the it's, like, the result of what happened. And, like, okay. my dream is to play Janet in shock treatment because I relate to that Janet a hell of a lot more than mm-hmm. in Rocky because... Totally. Yeah. I just love, like, it's like she's opening up and, like, finding who she really is and is, like, realizing, like, she is, like, a sexy person and, like, ugh. I mean, there's I, a little of that in There's the a little, but it's, like, when you see shock treatment, it's, like, she's, like, oh, I can, like, be on my own and I'm, like, oh, that's cool. You're selling me. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's great. I love, yeah. I love her in shock treatment. Jessica mm-hmm. Harper is up. Fucking I yeah, and I love her voice too. Yes. I've always like yes, yes. Like I definitely like Janet's songs in Shock Treatment better than in Rocky. Sorry if that's controversial or whatever, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, yeah. They're very oh. different. In oh, my own way is oh. my. I think it's my favorite song from oh, yeah. Shock Treatment, and it's a total sister track to uh, uh, Once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah, okay, I th- but I think it's. Also, a response to Damn It Janet of like, mm. he's proposing marriage. She's like reflecting on him proposing marriage so basically and elementary that she's like catching him up to speed. This is uh, life, and you had no idea what it was like when you were asking me to marry you. And I have matured, and that means the relationship needs to mature too, Brad. It can't always be, like, I can't always bone all the time, dude. (laughs) Yeah. You can't always be bitching in the kitchen or crying in the bedroom and asking me to sleep with you all the time. Like, life is more than that. Yeah. It's more than just... Absolutely. (laughs) I was like, yeah, I'm like, from this outsider perspective, I'm like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, you're like, wow, this movie sounds so, like, incredible. And then you'll watch it and you'll be like, what? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. In theory, in theory, this movie would be, like, pretty pretty good. Like, three the first three quarters of the movie would be pretty fucking good. Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) I'll have to keep that in mind. In in theory. (laughs) And then Farley Flavor shows up in person and you're like... Huh? Hold on, wait a minute, what? Yeah, gone. You're like, I don't want to spoil it for you, Emily, but just, you know that feeling the first time you watched Rocky Horror that you were like, what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah. 
it's worse. That's the feeling that you'll have again watching tra- shock treatment for the That's first time. That's fantastic. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> DVD's ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to ask, since you guys have seen the movie a bazillion times, mm-hmm. do you have any personal theories or uh, conspiracies or anything that, like... Wow. Um... We were actually talking about this earlier today because I like I re-listened to your episode with um, Austin and Abby, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Man, I don't have anything interesting." <laughs> Are you kidding? You're so interesting. Oh well, I mean, I don't have any like interesting conspiracy theories or anything. I was like, I always <laughs> just like watch it just to like turn my brain off. Almost, I don't know. It's just like comforting because yeah. I watched it so young. It's like my comfort movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it's true. like I, get that. I don't know i feel like i haven't looked into it in enough detail i feel like i was the same way until we started this show mm-hmm. yeah which is so cool by the way but oh, it's yeah. so so freaking cool like the way <laughs> when you. you like whenever i listen and like you guys talk about it, I was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool um i yeah i can't really say that i have ever really i think my favorite thing mm-hmm. it's not really a conspiracy my favorite thing i just love the medusa thing okay mm-hmm. yeah. okay. okay i love that tell me more tell me more i i i think it's such a cool idea and like why is that the technology that they've gone with like is oh, that yeah. a thing do other people have that in transylvania is that like is that like a common thing or yeah. is this this whole <laughs> new thing that frank's invented and also so why the thing I noticed uh-huh. is that yeah. pretty much every shot of rocky there is a like marble statue in the shot with him. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Rocky is possibly a demedusid statue? That'd be cool. Yeah. But also, like, I like the idea of that all the statues are like uh-huh. past creations or past. Yes. Like, that feels yes. a very like bland to me though, because they all look the same. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you know, you Where's could the say flavor? he's got a type. Yeah. He does have a type. Yeah, he's been <laughs> making a man, and he builds it to the same mold every, every single time. He just keeps he's just making like, it. This one will be better. I promise. This he's one like, will oh, work no. out. Yeah. Oh gosh, Frank, so misled. <laughs> I know. I love like the first time I remember. I do remember watching it when they got Medusa, and I was like, "What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Yeah." Mm-hmm. And that's I, when they remind you it's a sci-fi movie. And I cannot. Yeah. Wait, yeah. And I cannot wait till you guys get to that. If you have any like how they cast their fucking tits or something. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I can't, can't wait, wait to research it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I like the big left titty guy. Is, oh, like, yeah. One of my favorites. It's the best. I, I know there's someone on the face. So, someone on the Facebook group said something about. Uh, knowing a guy who owned Nell's, Nell's statue. I would statue. die. I would absolutely die, yeah. Could you imagine that just in the your coolest garden, thing ever. you just like look out your window and you're like, there's, yeah. there's Nell's. I remember Nell. when I was younger, I wanted to make the statues because that was the thing I thought was realistic as a child. Oh, uh, no, you should. <laughs> I don't know if I went that direction, but. <laughs> I telling you, I was obsessed i actually this is like the nerdiest thing ever but i planned on writing my own sequel i love yes. that and i started it Please i love it do it Finish yeah it. can you make sure i have a bring part? back my 12 year old writings yeah yes <laughs> yes well oh if God. you if you ever if i can ever read it i will want to oh if so. i can find it yeah i would die that sounds <laughs> be so terrible cool. i know yeah but it was I remember I had like big dreams and I was like, oh, this is going to be my call to fame. This is going to be it. Hey, <laughs> this is going to be it. This is going to yeah, be big, be. baby. <laughs> you haven't written it yet, but it might be. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Because literally, that's all we've been talking about is like, they have definitely built to something mm-hmm. that shock treatment also. I can't. I can't talk about it because Emily has not. Yeah, I'm sorry. It. It we can do another one after I've seen it if you want. Yeah. And like my reaction. Oh yes. my gosh! Yeah. No, we will definitely. Oh my gosh! Definitely <laughs> talk with you about with like shock fresh treatment. eyes oh. as someone who loves Rocky yes. seeing shock treatment for the first time. For real, yes. because it's like, yeah. I just I have so many thoughts about its location. 
and yeah uh, i'm down absolutely it is so like at least the last part uh, is so confusing and so like should i bring a notebook yes (laughs) (laughs) yes because i remember like i didn't watch it for so long for the whole thing yeah, I didn't watch it for so long after my first time. And then when I rewatched it, I was like, I do not remember that happening <laughs> at all. Like It's bizarre. And I feel like every single time I've watched it, I've been like, wait, is this what? like an extended edition I didn't know about? Because I do not recall. Like, <laughs> Same. Yes. Yeah. And then there are sometimes I watch it and I'm like, for some reason I remember something from like the last time I watched it that I don't think I saw in this time. Did I see a different oh, version? Yeah. Like. No, I think I just, my brain, like, flips on and off at different points in the movie. (laughs) Yeah. Because it just stops making linear sense, and you're like, uh, I'm just gonna enjoy this for the flashing lights and colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's art, baby. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Aside, I'm gonna go, like, backtrack really fast back to the Medusa statues, Mm -hmm. if that's, like, a like lawn ornament for Frank though like actually oh. if he has he has the technology Ooh. like he could do that <laughs> oh that'd <laughs> like, be incredible if you could take like your creations and make them your all like, your hookups your decor yeah <laughs> for your house and your garden your you know, one like, night wow. stand yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't deserve to go back <laughs> like full evil mastermind huge... sci-fi shit oh that would be incredible well what if okay so if Frank can medusa d medusa as he chooses mm-hmm. could he potentially unmedusa all of those creations that are around the lab if those are yeah absolutely absolutely Have i don't know party. how that control panel works yeah <laughs> i don't think any of them do no it looks pretty easy yeah they, they all kind of just f- fiddle flip it. yep you know <laughs> they just kind of do it and just does it and then things happen magically yeah. You flip the handle next to the TV screen, it goes to exactly what you want it to go to. Yeah. <laughs> It'll show easy. you, that's your ring control. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so do you guys have a favorite, like, scene? I know Audrey said that Hot Patootie is your favorite song. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite scene? Do you have a favorite, I'm curious if you have favorite characters, depending on whether that's different from who you perform as. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, 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 yeah, I, go, I go. my favorite is, um, is the floor show, the first beginning part of floor show with everyone doing their individual yeah. solos. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cause that stuck out so much to me as a kid Yes, as being like the full sexual awakening of like, oh my oh, God. Same for yeah. me, but with the pool scene, like specifically, oh. I was like, what? But huh. like to see, cause I had never seen like men in like lingerie boas Mm -hmm. dipping thrusting being sexy in a different way Mm -hmm. and i just remember being like holy shit this is like the coolest thing ever and i still love it because it gives shadow casters this amazing moment to shine in their character for those four Mm -hmm. so good and it's like a little individual like spotlight solo of like sexiness and bravado for every character including rocky brad Janet and Columbia, you just get this awesome moment of ownership. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Sins of the Flesh. Like 10 ish years ago, they did a floor show photo shoot oh, in an, in so an actual cool. pool. Oh, so they had like full floor show oh. gear on and the makeup, like everything all done up. And they did a photo shoot like in an actual pool, oh. with, like underwater pictures and everything it I've was incredible that, so long. that sounds amazing oh. like, we have to find those pictures i'm sure we need to just make it happen yeah i love that yeah, yeah so definitely my favorite scene to perform in to watch people perform um and to see in the movie is is that floor show interaction yeah. of, of them hell yeah for yeah. sure that's mine 100 percent. yeah and like i said like i love i've always loved just the pool scene of just like mm-hmm. just just makeup mackin'. yeah mackin just shoes falling off <laughs> makeup slams just so chaotic and i mean i've always loved hot patootie just so much um so good. energy yeah i love that yeah oh yeah and then you know i think for both of us like your favorite character has always pretty much been columbia yeah 
and mine's always been like magenta and frank Mm -hmm. um because like those are just two roles like i knew that i was gonna perform hell yeah yeah totally mine has always been columbia since i was like i think even before i saw the movie like i was just listening to the soundtrack and like was like that's a cool voice like yeah oh yeah just Mm -hmm. always been in love with little nell and columbia Mm mm-hmm I love Susan Sarandon. Love it. <laughs> That's so cute. Everyone's Aww. like their little character. Yeah. <laughs> it is cute. <laughs> it's like a BuzzFeed personality quiz. Like, oh, I love Rocky like when a character. new person like comes in. And you're like, all right, are they a Columbia or a Magenta or a Janet <laughs> or, or a Janet? Yeah, but like very specifically, like I feel like Columbias and Magentas are very easy. Yes. To What's spot, so funny is we like... have we have like two newish Transylvanians that joined within the last like year. Uh huh. Um, Harper and Zoe. And <gasps> oh my gosh, I love them. them. I've been waiting for oh, them to turn so eighteen, and yeah. I was like, "You guys would be a great Colombian magenta." And I was like, "Zoe, I would love to see you as Columbia. Oh, Harper, you absolutely. would be an amazing magenta." And they go, "Well, that's great, but we actually wanted it the, the other, other way." way. Oh, <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> That's but like, so funny. I think that they're both they're both incredible. They would both be great as either. But it was just in my brain. I pictured one as one and the other as the other. Oh yeah. And they were like, "No, we want it switched." And I was like, "All right, go for it." That's so. But cool. it's just so funny because you are totally right. You look at people and like the easiest ones to spot are Columbias and Magentas. Yeah. And Franks. <laughs> well, and, and <laughs> honestly, mm-hmm. Janets are pretty. Janets are really easy to spot. Yeah, too. it was really funny because like the first time, like one of my first times out of Shadowcast, when they came up to me and they were like, "Oh, we need you to do Magenta," but someone else was also like, "And Janet," and I was like, "Where the hell did that come from?" Because I had never <laughs> thought of performing Janet before. And then after that, it was like all I could think about. Like, you know what? That could be fun. Do you know what's mm-hmm. funny is the same thing kind of happened with me for Frank. Because that was Mm -hmm. never a role I really saw myself stepping into Mm -hmm. until someone said, oh, I'd let like referencing my height. Like, oh, my God, I think you would make a great Frank. And I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh. Yeah. (laughs) That's so nice. Well, then I'm so excited to talk about uh, like when we get to Rose Tint because. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's Oh, there's oh, there's so much to interpret. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all being their complete, uninhibited selves. Oh, so yeah. you're getting so like beautiful. direct and genuine character truths mm-hmm. that like speak to their motivations and complicate the 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 story so much because poor Brad. Yeah. <laughs> poor Brad. And then, like, also show, poor Columbia. I love Brad's show, too. I All love of doing Brad's show. It's so funny, yeah. Do you think Riff is doing what he's doing? Like, spearheading this mutiny for Magenta's sake? Do you think it's, like, fueled for his love for his sister? I think it's fueled for love for himself. I yeah. think it's been passed over and spurned over, and it's more of an sure. ego for him. Yeah, he's like, Magenta's too into Columbia. Like, I gotta, uh-huh. gotta move on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I definitely see it as more of, obviously, they're both in these kind of, like, service roles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it seems like for him being this almost, like, commander of sorts from Transylvania to be put into such a role like that, that I feel like that's kind of you know, no pun intended, like that chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The hunch on his back. The hunch on the back. <laughs> um, and that you feel so much anger and resentment in that final confrontation mm-hmm. that I feel like it's definitely more refueled in that moment of like, you never liked me, like, bear yeah. that. Yeah, I look don't. at me, please. <laughs> surely, like, surely there's some magenta consideration in there. But to me, it reads so much more as, as a as a spurned him, and hurt yeah. riff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I we were, we when we do our research, what we do is we, do all of our, we do our first watch through, and then we do another watch through with the commentary on from the Blu-ray mm-hmm. before we do any of like our online research and stuff. And um, one of my favorite things that we got from the commentary was Richard said 
that Pat played Magenta so perfectly because it was just so aloof and like just kind of made it seem like Magenta just sort of went along. It was with like things. indifferent. Yeah, to she she didn't really care what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally see that in her character where she's just like, whatever, sure. <laughs> oh, definitely. But just like in general, she's like, sure. Yeah. You want me to yeah. like dust this banister, but like, <laughs> We always say mm-hmm. she's very like cat-like. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Now I want to see Magenta Shadowcasted as cat like, woman. as like a cat. Yeah. And just like slinking around the stage and like pushing things Stephanie off did. the stage. Yeah. Because we did, um, at MI, when we had a show on, um, for our leap year, we did uh-huh. a We Do What We Want show, oh my and gosh. Stephanie played Magenta as a cat. Yes. <gasps> oh my and gosh! Was, and that was a great show, because I was Frankenfurter, and I did it in a bedazzled hot dog costume <laughs> as an actual Frankenfurter. You're but yeah, like, seeing dog. her as a cat was like... Because she was like, I don't know what to do. And we were like, oh my god, she's so cat-like and fully just, like, purring and, like, it was incredible. Yeah. I love that. That's so good. I love it. (laughs) So, you know, we've been, you know, talking for a little while. (laughs) And I have just, you know, a a question I wanted to ask both of you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think Rocky Horror means like just in yeah, general question means yeah. question mark oh like if someone were to come up to you and be like that movie that you that you do all the time mm-hmm. what what is it what's it about i typically just go gay frankenstein and just leave it at that and let them <laughs> <laughs> let them kind of figure it out on their own um that's def- I've definitely said that multiple times to people. <laughs> That's so interesting because when I've like again when we're talking to like straight coworkers who definitely don't know what I'm talking about, um, I've gone to the like well it was this movie musical from the '70s that didn't do well, yeah, uh-huh. but then somehow started this like following at midnight, yeah, and that's why we do it at midnight. And it's now the longest running, continually showing movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I've never really gone into like the what exactly is it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cause... okay. So you tell your friend, go see it. They come back and they're like, okay, so I saw the thing that you told me to go see. Uh-huh. What, what, what was did that I thing? see? What did, yeah. you see? <laughs> what did you just make me watch? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause like. For me, like, when I've told people gay Frankenstein, like, even after they've seen it, they've been like, oh, oh, <laughs> and it kind of clicks, but then they're still like, but what about everything else? What about everything else? And you just have to kind of be like, well, you know what? It was the 70s. Like, <laughs> yeah, you tell them to go listen to Time Warp Radio. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do now. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I have a very specific memory of, like, the car ride home from when I saw it after prom. Literally just spending the entire drive home explaining the entire plot to my friends, because none of them got it. Uh Uh-huh. It's so... And even then, they were still like, I I don't understand. Why was Eddie there? (laughs) Why... (laughs) Why is there cannibalism? (laughs) Like... Yes! Exactly! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and it's I very specifically remember just being like just shut up and let it happen like <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny I don't oh my gosh hmm I don't know I, I don't mean to put you on the spot but just since you know it's like it, would you say it's one of your favorite movies or your favorite movie just point blank oh wow um, I would because it had such an impact on me at a young age and I have, like, a list of movies that I could watch over and over again without getting sick mm-hmm. of. And it's definitely on that list, which is, like, mm-hmm. those movies aren't necessarily my favorites, but they're all special to me and, like, have a sense of comfort. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say that Rocky's probably my favorite movie, which is so something I never really 
think about or want about. to say. Yeah. <laughs> you never want to yeah. admit to it, but that's, yeah. But it's definitely that opinion has formed within the years of me, the past four or five years when I started going to shadow casts and getting the full experience of Rocky. Yeah. Whereas when I was younger, I would say, oh yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. I like it. I think it's really cool. But the added significance of the sense of community, the people I've met, like Audrey, the time and energy that I've put into it Mm -hmm. has Mm -hmm. elevated it to so much more than a movie. It's like not even just a movie. anymore. it's like a whole. It's a whole. It's like a whole lifestyle. Like, yeah, it's. It's so much. Well, you answered the question. (laughs) (laughs) So to that, I would say, yeah, it definitely is because it just it's just so much more. That's beautiful. That was really beautifully said. Oh. Truly. <laughs> um, where can we like look at your beautiful faces when you're not shadow casting and then posting all of those photos to our Instagram? <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at simply underscore gore, G O R E underscore G E O U S. It's a little play on gorgeous. And then you can find me at Instagram at, at the amazing Emily with Emily spelled E M I L E E. But be forewarned, I do not post a lot. I'm sorry. I do post a lot. So, <laughs> Audrey, please be warned. Yeah. <laughs> you will, you've probably seen more of my face on your Instagram and my Instagram than too. Mine. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> but I'm there if you want me. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. I appreciate it so much. This, uh, this, I just, I feel so full and good. Oh, like yes, this. thanks for having us. This has been so fun. I was so excited. Today. I know, me too. <laughs> thanks again to Audrey and Emily for talking with us, and thanks to you for tuning into this special presentation. And don't forget, on Wednesdays we watch Rocky. Bye. Bye. Please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps us out, and we appreciate all your feedback. We'll see you next time.